Yes. Start your day off with a higher vibrational podcast with weekly guests covering spirituality, healthy foods, and so much more. Go to SherryLord.com for more info. It's been an interesting morning with technical issues this morning, but it all was just wants to keep playing the ad. <laughs> um, we just want to say welcome to everybody. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. I'm Sherry Lord, your influencer host. And by the way, please chat. Say hi so we know you're here. We know we get a lot of people watching us, but we also like to have people chat. And thank you again for joining us. And also, if you'd like to advertise with us, all you have to do is go to www.sherrylord.com and we have reasonable paid ads there. If you want us to boost you and help you get out there, just make sure to fill out the application and I'll be more than happy to contact you. And we have a very special guest, Reverend Nancy Lee Robinson. We are so excited to have her. Her topic today that we're going to cover is navigating the vibrational shift. And welcome, Nancy. We're so happy to have you. Thank you so much for having me. I am. I really feel honored. Oh, uh, we're really so happy. Also, well, you know, Nancy, I was really I was reading about your little bio that you have, and you have had your psychic ability since eight years of age. That's young. Yeah, that's young. Um, my great grandmother passed away when I was about eight. I'm not sure mm -hmm. about exactly the age, but somewhere in there. And um, I saw her standing at the end of my wow. bed. And she said, I'm going home now, but wow. I'll be with you. And then my mother came up the stairs and said, uh, Grandma Fackler passed away. And I said, I'm wow. going here. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. So That's amazing. Having, you know, different things. And at that time, um, you know, because I'm in my 70s, that yeah. the, the, it wasn't very popular to state what you were seeing or feeling or things like right. that. When I got into my 30s, I okay. started studying with my mentor. I mean, I did some study before that. But it really picked up when I got into my 30s. About oh, 30, wow. I think I was about 32. And I started uh, working with my mentor, Reverend Andy Gaiman, who was in Fairfax, Virginia. And I lived there also. And I sat in meditation circle uh, every Monday night. And I trained in the Morris Pratt institute so wow. i then started to um um doing um readings for people in public and i started doing um you know uh sermons or the lesson at church uh because the, you know the practicing mediums would do that at the spiritualist church and then I would go up to Lilydale, which was the spiritual camp uh, on this in the summers when she was up there for a week or so. So I really got, you know, the hang of doing, you know, getting connected with my spirit guides and the teachers and loved ones for uh, for myself and others. So wow. that's how it started out. I was about thirty two to thirty three when I started that. So wow. a long time. <laughs> yeah, what an experience, though, and some of the famous people you got to work with. And also those two spiritual um, avenues are very popular and very well known. And yeah. um, they have a good reputation. And, and also Lilydale does because they're very, uh, I don't know if it's rigid or strict, but they're very disciplined, which is a good thing. And they really yeah. teach you, you know. So um, that's how. And. and Gaiman, she was the she worked really she was very into the national um uh, spiritualist association and she really uh, made sure that we were disciplined students yeah. mm -hmm. that we did our work so um, that was really uh you know she had us really working on yeah. the 
our skills, developing our spiritual, our beliefs. Our, and then when I went to, um, I was doing readings and healings and stuff in Virginia, and then I moved to Minnesota. Um, and when I moved to Minnesota, that was in 2009, I started um, studying pranic healing. Okay. Well, pranic healing is not just a healing modality. That It turns into like a mystery school and has higher spiritual teaching and higher uh, meditations and um, things like that. We developed my uh, spiritual side, which also, and it also um, developed my healing. Okay. So the healing and the spiritual, the, the psychic, the, the mediumship, it yeah. came stronger and stronger and stronger. And then I, I've never stopped studying. And I think people um, just think that maybe that it, you can study one thing and that'll be it. But I don't, I don't believe that. I believe that we get, and as we were talking before the show started, Sherry, that we get to a certain mm -hmm. level and then we have to move up. And that goes through different studies or different uh disciplines um in order to grow yourself and match up what's happening in the vibrations so mm -hmm. going in from that into what's happening into our vibrational shift now is there are more uh, gamma rays and and energies coming into the earth yes. light is coming onto the earth and it has been uh, mm -hmm. for eons and eons Yes. The divine Sophia or the great mother energy or the, the feminine energy is coming back to earth. And so it had been like a, only a small amount of feminine energy. But when we had the fall of man, the male energy was strong and the feminine energy went small. Now it's coming back. Yeah. And it's going to level out and balance out. And then we will go into the fifth dimensional frequency or golden age, whatever you want to call it. And that's where we're headed for. So all of these kind of uh, energy shifts are happening on the earth physically and etherically they're happening. So as we go along, we have to adjust and, and and we become more and more aware. And so part of my awareness is that we're multidimensional beings. Yes. And, you know, yeah. people say past lives, but I'm becoming aware that it's all happening at once. Yes. Really mm -hmm. a past life. It's just another dimension of yes. your. Mm -hmm. And as we are... Uh, adjusting to these downloads because we are getting these codes and these downloads and constantly. Mm -hmm. And as we're getting these things, we will expand our intelligence and our understanding of things in a higher frequency way, which is uh, nothing like we used to think that things were more linear, intelligent intelligence about plenty grade second grade third grade but mm -hmm. that doesn't mean like tesla and einstein and all these other geniuses how can that be if it's like uh linear it can't because they were tapping into divine intelligence which right. is all interesting and as we grow into these higher frequencies, we will tap into that higher intelligence. That yeah. higher intelligence then will give us the, the people who didn't think they even had ESP will start to tap into their, their, their higher sense and things like that. And so that's how this shift is part people are become, going to become more aware. But right. for people like you and I, Sherry, and people on their spiritual path, 
we have to become more and more conscious of what we're thinking, saying, doing to hold a high vibration to, and then to help other people through our work that we do, our readings, our healings, other things to come up and bring them up too and to tap into their higher senses. Well, you and myself and other people on there that are spiritual teachers and leaders and things like that, we can affect them just with our own vibration. Yes. Mm -hmm. So as we, I mean, one of my experiences is that uh, my family always kind of poo-pooed everything I did. I was totally different from them. They're farmers in Iowa and okay. But at this particular point now, my younger brother is now asking me for help. And yeah. We talk about spiritual, <laughs> which he had never. And when I spoke to him not too long ago, because he's going through a difficult spiritual thing. When I spoke to him not too long ago, he goes, wow, you've changed. <laughs> <laughs> really, but that's okay. <laughs> you know, but that's I funny. Hold you in a certain they think of you a certain way and they don't realize that we're right. all shifting and changing and that maybe that that person isn't the same as they used to be. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh my God. I want to say thank you, Beth Perry and Ann Cobb for joining us and chatting. Yeah. We know we get people watching us, but we also love it. Say hi, shout out and say hello to us. Um, yeah. What else can you um, share about Navigating the vibrational shift. I know this is our, what we've been talking about. You've been talking about how it's shifting and changing. Do you have any tools for people or, or any, what else would you like to share about oh, yeah. navigating okay. the vibrational shift? When we first start, we have three things that happen to us when we start to move into a shift or we're realizing that we're shifting and changing. Right. Willing, awareness, and choice. First, we have to be willing to look at what it is, that what is it that we're shifting into? What is it that we're changing? What is it that we want to change? Mm -hmm. Because you're going to go through a period of time, the 52 days before your birthday every year is what's called the Saturn phase. The Saturn phase is construct constructive deconstruction. So constructive deconstruction is looking at your life or what's going on with you the 52 days before your birthday and saying, okay, this doesn't work anymore for me. And that needs to change. Okay, so there's the willingness to look at it. Then the awareness after the birthday then becomes sun phase and that's when to take action. Awareness of what it is and then choice. Am I going to change this? Am I going to stay where I'm at? That's your choice. We have free will on this earth. Mm -hmm. So, and, um, you know, it's your choice whether you want to move or shift with what's happening in the world or you want to stay the same. I right. can guarantee you if you decide to stay the same, it's uh, not going to be very happy for you. Let me just put it that way, because everything on this earth is constantly changing. Mm -hmm. And all these vibrations are coming in. There are higher vibrations than have ever been be here before in our lifetime. So um, it is so much easier for us to say, okay, I have to look at these things, see what I want to change, and then make the choice to change. Now, right. then, make the choice to change what my spirit guides and teachers have taught me in my teachings are the three things there also. Empowerment. And then forgiveness and gratitude. Empowerment, I usually teach people to do an I am affirmation. Because mm -hmm. you need to reconnect to your higher soul. When we come into this earth, we have a big, big soul 
and only a particle can fit into the body. So we have an incarnated soul and a higher soul. The higher soul resides above us and is connected to the divine. Well, when the, the, the energy comes through the higher soul, it steps down that divine energy. So if we didn't ask, if we asked for guidance and the uh, uh, divine energy came pouring into our bodies, it would literally blow us up too strong. Energy. So our higher soul is like a conductor. It brings, steps down the energy, brings it down the spiritual cord, which is connected at our crown, and it brings it down into the incarnated soul. But lots of times because of separation and things that happen on earth, we get this discouraged, heartbroken, things happen, and we don't feel like we're being guided because we have separated ourselves from that guidance of our higher soul. So reconnection to the higher soul so that we're constantly being guided. And I like to tell people that when I first get up in the morning, I will say, let me be divinely guided through each and every moment of this day. And my life goes smoother just because of that, because I want to connect. But there's an I am affirmation that I have. It's, and, and I say, I am that I am. I'm not my body. I'm not my emotions. I'm not my thoughts. I'm not my mind. The mind is only a subtle instrument of the soul. I am the soul. I'm a spiritual being of divine intelligence, divine love, divine power or will. And I am one and con- I am one and connected with my higher soul. I am a child of God. I'm connected to God. I'm one with God. I'm one with all. So when you st- do that, you reconnect that guidance from your higher soul. And it like brings the power down and locks it in. So lots of times we get knocked off our by people, situations, you know, we get knocked off our center. So um, that will re-center uh, you. It'll center you to the point that you are uh, being divinely guided. And I always say divinely guided even down to the apple you put in the store. You know, because once you have that connection and you rely on that connection, your life goes a lot smoother. Don't you think, Sherry? <laughs> yes, yes, it's a lot easier. Absolutely. <laughs> Um, yeah, we've all gone through levels. Um, I always say we awaken levels. You know, it's not like you just awaken and you get there. I just feel we're always evolving. You know? Oh, that's about the change. They, yeah. Things happen constantly. The trees change. The plants change. The flowers change. The animals change. You know, it's a, always a constant, constant change. Even in our own cells, they're orbiting. There's yeah. all movement and if you try to stagnate that movement you end up hurt yourself yeah and try not to change so when you do the empowerment you empower yourself and you become more connected yeah i always say you get off of the emotional roller coaster which is peaks and valleys peaks and valleys and you get on what i call the universal wave which is uh, downs and ups, but it's soft. Mm-hmm. It doesn't stay down as long, and it, it goes yeah. high, but it doesn't it doesn't go down as far each time, yeah. and to the point where you're being able to stay in your center and uh, be the observer of your own life. Yeah, I think that's that's that as a, as an individual experience it's amazing for each person who has that you know or to maintain or to get there and to have that experience but i think it's a beautiful thing and so much is changing in the world and the consciousness is shifting as well um as we're all shifting and is there anything you'd like to explain uh to people what they can do is it what would be the discipline for them if they're starting out or those who are already advanced, what can they do to evolve 
Is it meditation? What I mean, I know you um, gave some affirmations, which were good. Huge, huge thing. Because, like I said in the beginning, we had, or maybe earlier, that we had right. opportunity during 2020 to yeah. shut go within. Yeah. And this is the thing. You have to be aligned. And that's the realigning with your higher soul, realigning with the divine within you. Re yeah. for is a huge thing, yeah. you know. Not allowing spirit, uh, social, um, what do you call it? Social expectation and, and, and ex, um, assuming things that they we assume is, uh, ex expectations that the social has on us. Like you're it's supposed to be. When I was growing up, our uh, big person was Twiggy. Everybody wanted to look like a. <laughs> Right now, the yeah. big, big everything, <laughs> <laughs> which is quite funny. How you when you observe from a stick person to what they have now, it's like what? <laughs> <laughs> but mm -hmm. you know, we get out of that. We live in a different dimension of ourselves, yeah. exactly. and we don't have to buy into what is expected of us. Of right. us. As we do that. So then the, I was saying the three things was, uh, these are the what I teach for people to really get their vibration up higher and, and tap yeah. in. So you meditate, you empower yourself through an affirmation, yeah. through uh, whatever you feel, like the I am affirmation I just gave you. And then forgiveness. Oh, forgiveness. Yeah holds a huge part because we have four bodies. We have the mental, the emotional, the etheric, and the physical. Well, in the um, emotional body, that's where things get emotional scarring or emotional energy that's trapped. Okay, the emotional body originally was given to us to exonerate and expand the Godhead, the divine within us, okay? But as we have karma and different things on this lower level of vibration, uh, the emotions, trauma, uh, things that have happened to people, uh, mm -hmm. you know, just whatever gets trapped in that emotional body. Well, as we go into this vibrational shift, we cannot take the old into the new. Right. It's not going to work. Yep. Okay. You're not at the highest vibration if you're trying to drag your, your, uh, you know, your stuff, or somebody else's stuff. Because sometimes we hold somebody else's stuff. So forgiveness is a huge thing. Yes. We have to forgive ourselves. We have to forgive anything that's happened in our past. Anything. So when you clear out that emotional body, you're not looking through a wound. Yeah. So if you've got a wound in that emotional body, everything that happens in front of you, you look through it. Mm -hmm. That's like somebody who carries a victim. Pack. They were they're a victim. They'll always be a victim until they clear that out. Right. You know. So it's stuff that we are carrying with us that has to be released. So that forgiveness is highly, highly important. And then I, those are the three tools I say, I tell people to use. Right. And then the second to the third tool is gratitude. We yeah. can create with gratitude. We can say, Oh, I'm so thankful. I have this brand new car. You haven't got that, but you envision it. And you're always saying thank you for it. So it's happened. Pretty yeah. soon you see a new car sitting in your driveway. Mm -hmm. You don't have to know the hows. And how is that going to happen? You just start having it happen. You know, things will come to you if you hit, hold yourself in the right vibration. And gratitude is a great way to bring that vibration in. Yeah. Be happy. You got to put a happy yeah. emotion in. You got to be happy. You get up in the in the day and say, "I'm so happy for my life." When I teach people to do a gratitude. Um, journal, I tell them to write 10 things down that they're grateful for. Mm -hmm. and 
say, thank you, thank you, thank you, and then say, I love my life. Yeah, that's a good, good, good advice. Very good advice. And how can people um, not just get a hold of you, but what do you what do you offer? I know I had a list, but I wasn't able to fit it on the little screen here. It kind of cut me off with so many words. Can you share people about what classes you're teaching and what you offer and then how they can get a hold of you? Okay. I am, um, uh, uh, I do, uh, at the Cosmic Fire of Spiritual Light, I am uh, one of the reverends there. Yeah. And I do every second Sunday of the month. Plus, um, every first and third Wednesday of the month, I do a service that is messages and channeling. So when I do my service on Sunday, that's like a, a certain kind of thing, a meditation or, or a channeling. I don't know what come, spirit does that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but on the first and third Wednesdays of each month, I do um, a message service where I give little messages and then I do a channeling meditation or whatever. And that, and those the Sunday service is streamed on mm -hmm. uh, on the Cosmic Center of Spiritual Light um, um, website, and but the Wednesday night services those are in person only. So, but the and then every month, um, Reverend Sharon Elizabeth and I. We do a um, class on abundance, which is eight eight or seven seven or six six or five five. So, and all of those things are on the yeah. Cosmic Center of Spiritual Light. But this is what I do personally. Lots of times, okay. I'll have a class, just depending on how busy my schedule is. I'll have a certain class, like a forgiveness class or the way to unconditional love or, or different things like that. I just, I would post that on my website. And you have the website up, don't you? Yep, and I want you to state it too. Um, okay. It's so Rev. We'd love to hear it too. Okay. Rev, R-E-V, Nancy Lee, dot com. Okay. So, uh, 